Hey, what's going on guys? We're back for another uh, Dark Souls 1 lore through. And, um, yeah, we're going to start the DLC today. Um, I was just looking up here to kind of look at where everything is situated. Looks like that's the bridge with Hellkite on it. I guess that's probably the uh, um, where the Taurus, where we fight the Taurus demon over there. So that means that's where the uh, sunlight or the the warriors of sunlight are, right there. And that's where we fight that tower to the right is where we fight that one black knight that I died to a few times. Anyway, it's always nice <clears throat> to get your bearings in the world. Um, one kind of cool thing to look at with uh, the dark root forest is you see these little speckles. Looks like they're tied to the camera, not. No, oh, yeah, they might be tied to the world. But yeah, there's these little speckles, like maybe fireflies or dust. That's kind of nice. Um, those uh, those are also a part of where we're going. Ulusil. So, yeah, we beat uh, we beat the Hydra before. I'm gonna just put on the uh, rusted iron ring so we can run through here. So yeah, we've come through. We beat the uh, haven't gone up that huge ladder yet next to that waterfall. These guys are gonna follow me. Uh, maybe we'll do that at the very very end, but I don't need to do that right now. Um, but we beat the Hydra, and then we came over here, and we beat a Crystal Golem. A Golden Crystal Golem, and Dusk of Uasil came out. And then we uh, grabbed a Pendant from the Duke's Archives. And now, things are a little different here. I assume they're going to not bother us here. But, now we see someone here, with some items on them. Crown of Dusk, in the antiquated set. Let's read this. Special magic crown bestowed upon Dusk, Princess of Ulusil, upon her birth. Its wearer is blessed by all manner of magic. This raises the power and effect of the wearer's magic, but damage suffered by magic also rises. So I guess it's good if you're going to be using magic, but not in a place where people use magic. A dress from the ancient fallen land of Ulusil. Its ivory-colored silk features elaborate embroidery and is imbued with an ancient magic power. One cannot expect any physical protection. It's not meant to be worn in battle. So yeah, we're just getting a lot that it's ancient, it's from Ulusil, it's not of this time. So uh, we see a weird, uh, uh, I don't know, what do you call this? Looks like it could be, it moves with us, like, like it's a, it, it seems like, uh, Based, especially based on what happens, it seems like a wormhole. Let's check it out. Well, here we are in the DLC. It seems like a rather large furry hand came out and grabbed us. And uh, pulled us in. Uh, from this time forward, I'm pretty much going to go up to 20 Estus. I mean, why not, right? So 
So, I mean, what to say about this place? Um, we don't know much about it yet. Looks like I'm in some sort of uh, wooded area. But we can see the sky above, and it looks quite light up outside. Let's see if we can gold pine resin up here. So, yeah. Great DLC tactic. Go from a bonfire to a boss. The Sanctuary Guardian. Oops, <laughs> I was trying to heal. So this tail we can cut off. I'm not going to worry about it because I do have it in my other game and if nothing else I can... Uh, this is where you cut it off. Ugh. Ooh, poisoned. Ooh! As with all things in the DLC, I am very, um... Unfam like, I don't want to say unfamiliar, i played through the DLC like probably four times, but I mean compared to the rest of the game, I certainly uh, am a newbie at it, so timings and all that stuff are very new for me. I mean, it seems like I can just, oops, I can just tank this damage. Why did not, <laughs> that one didn't hit me for some reason. <laughs> I'll just rely on brute strength here. So yeah, um... <coughs> excuse me. You can cut off the tail. I have that in another playthrough, and I'm pretty much resigned to going to loading that other playthrough so I can get some of the items that I haven't gotten here. And in reviewing some of my past episodes, I've realized that there's some obvious uh, items that I haven't gotten and we can just review them in that episode. But for now, let's look at what the Guardian Soul says. It looks like a, a different colored soul. It's like it's a different um, uh, icon for the soul. Soul of the white-winged lion, sanctuary watcher who dreaded the spread of the abyss. The Guardian exhibited traits of several animals other than lions, suggesting that it was no ordinary beast, but rather closer to the beings known as demons. Well, we know that lions are associated with uh, Ornstein um, and maybe Anne Orlando. We see lions inscribed in Anne Orlando. Uh, Ornstein has a symbol, uh, a face of a lion, and his helm is a face of a lion. So lions are definitely um, related to the gods, um, although. We're in Ulysseel now, where it's a totally different territory. It also says that it's many other animals 
meaning that it might be a demon or similar to something like a demon. So since I don't think that the chaos has anything to do with this place at all, um, I think that uh, what it means by that is that there, the mechanism which created demons might have been a mechanism that created something like that. <clears throat> but that was a sanctuary guardian, so apparently uh, we now have access to uh, a sanctuary, I would guess, as it was guarding it. And I would say, you know, compare, you know, before I get too far deep in here, I know all of the, all of the DLC kind of exudes this, but I just want to appreciate here, like, we are, uh, like, what a nice, bright, and contrasting uh, area compared to uh, the existing Dark Souls. I mean, we're so far in the past that it's either during the Age of Fire or right before it. And, um, yeah, now we go to the Ulusil Sanctuary. Um, and we now have green and bright and... and just lovely compared to the dying, dark, and decrepit... Um, Dark, uh, Dark Souls world, Lordran. So we see all of these interesting statues around. Since I took twice to kill the Guardian, of course, we have to. I am not human any longer, so I have to. Reverse hollowing again. But I have enough humanity here. I, we don't need humanity, so... Oops. I can see the edge of what looks like a, uh, a buttress or something up there. Through the trees. Some sort of fortress or castle. There are a couple items around the uh, Ulusil Sanctuary. Sanctuary of what? I mean, I don't know that sanctuaries are of things necessarily, but you know what I mean. What type of sacred place is this? What is it safe from? What is it a sanctuary of? <clears throat> I mean, the outside world. The, uh... I mean, again, we're not sure. I'm not sure when this in the timeline is. You know, I don't know if this is, you know, is this the age of fire or not? I don't know if danger is lurking around every corner. And here's a large mushroom. Well, look at this one. From what far away age hast thou come? Thy scent is very human indeed, but not intolerable. Ah, Princess Dusk's savior. Thine aura is precisely as she described. I thank thee deeply for rescuing her highness. But Princess Dusk is here no longer. Snatched away by that horrifying primeval human. And so I must ask, couldst thou once more play the savior? Uh, 
like a lot of dialogues, this has so much in it. So, Dusk, that we saved from the Crystal Golem, has come back. So we saved her, and she's returned to, as I say, I, I'm kind of preempting, to the past. So she's traveled back here to explain to this mushroom that she met a savior and that we were human. Um, she says that we smell human. Um, this is something that From does a lot too. It, it's part of Bloodborne a lot too, that there's a scent associated with uh, different types of people and that that might indicate their intentions or, or where they come from. So she can smell that I'm human. She also seems surprised that I'm human. In other words, there might not be a lot of humans. And she says, but it's okay that you're a human. Because, I mean, I forget the exact words. So it doesn't seem like uh, humans are favored well in this time. Because um, uh, she's like, oh, it doesn't, you know, despite you being a human, you know, you've saved Dusk or whatever. Um, I also think it's fascinating that... Um, Dust could communicate to a mushroom what uh, who has no nose what exactly precisely I smelled like but whatever um, she also says that um, dusk is not here any longer like dusk came back and presumably came to the sanctuary and was chilling like hey boop 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 talks to this mushroom and is like oh I had a savior he she smelled like this or something. And then she got whisked away by what she called the primeval human. We talked a lot about um, the uh, the furtive pygmy, as described in the first um, cutscene, as finding the fourth soul, the dark soul which has been split amongst all humans in the form of humanity. Uh, yet she talks about a primeval human. I, you know, I wonder if the furtive pygmy became this thing, what she describes as the primeval human, or if through the process that the, that the furtive pygmy did uh, by creating humanity, there was a kind of like, a, you know, like primeval <laughs> human humanoid figure. Um, I will say that that hand that grabbed us in the beginning is the, the thing she's describing. Um, and so, yeah, so she's saying Dusk has been kidnapped again by another person, which leads me to believe that, you know, Dusk can't really take care of herself all that much, which is a shame. But... She's saying, do you want to be the savior again? I mean, what else am I going to do here? Of course, I'll save her. Again. Thank you. I am Elizabeth, guardian of this sanctuary. Something of a godmother to Princess Dusk. I shall assist thee to my utmost, for I am one with the sorceries of Uraseel. It makes me wonder whether or not, um, you know, Elizabeth was always a mushroom, or whether Elizabeth is a mushroom. She said she's one with the sorceries of Ulusil. We've encountered those a little bit in the past. Very interesting to me. They're more an approximation than the current sorceries. Uh, she also says that she's the guardian of this sanctuary, although we just fought something called the Sanctuary Guardian. Not sure about the words used in that. But let's see what she sells and see if we can learn more about her or this area or whatnot. So she sells repair powder, which is interesting because we saw that uh, one of the Ulus associates was repair. And I talked a lot about how Dark Souls 2 talks about light is the thing that repairs things and then the other sorceries talk about how all Ulusil sorceries are manipulation of light. And then it said something about trying to approximate repair powder. Well, a repair powder was around in, in Ulusil's time. And it's and the icon still does look like light in a pouch. Along the same line, we have the gold pine resin, which, you know, I would have guessed was associated with Gwyn. You know, because it's lightning, 
aka the sun interpreted as lightning, put on a weapon. But yet, you know, sun, light, you know, might be... <laughs> Believe it or not, separate from Gwen. And she sells uh, same things. Hidden weapon, hidden body, cast light repair. Yet its effects resemble repair powder, which must have found its way into the culture of this lost land. Well, here's the repair powder. So, nothing more to read about this. The Ulusil Ivory Catalyst. Sorcery Catalyst of the Lost Land of Ulusil, formed by enchanted white bark branches. The white bark boosts sorcery adjustment. The sor so, these are all the same things that... Uh, um, Dusk was selling, I believe. I don't think that uh, I don't think that this is new. Well, let's see what Elizabeth has to say. Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient beast, and threatens to swallow the whole of Ulysses. Knight Artorius came to stop this, but such a hero has nary a murmur of dark. Without doubt, he will be swallowed by the abyss overcome by its utter blackness. Indeed, the abyss may be unstoppable. Still, I have faith that Princess Dusk may be rescued yet. Okay, so uh, talks about the dark, or the abyss uh, and the dark. Talks about Artorius. Artorius has come here already in this time um, to uh, fight the abyss. She doesn't have high hopes for Artorius. Um, thinks the abyss will swallow um, even Artorius, and that nothing can stop the abyss. Well, I mean, not only do we like like have I I've hinted at the fact that the the stories that we kind of hear about Artorius, you know, it might have a different story and a, a, a different outcome. In other words, Alvina kind of mentions that Artorius, uh, he's this hero, he's got all these, like, you know, legends about him, but they might not all be true or that they're not true. Um, you know, this is the kind of, like, you know, Elizabeth is saying that, that so far he has not defeated the Abyss. He hasn't, you know, uh, conquered it. And she thinks that he might well be swallowed by it. Uh, Alvina says that he was not the conqueror of the abyss. Everyone else says that he is. He's called the Abyss Walker. He came to, he went to the abyss, and he and he returned from the abyss. Um, and she also says, what else did she say? Thou shalt see further on. An abyss was begat of the ancient, ancient beast. beast. And threatens to swallow the whole of Ulysses. Night Artorius right. and without doubt he will be swallowed by the abyss. Indeed, the abyss still. The the abyss might be unstoppable. Which uh so again we we can already tell right away from Elizabeth that she's not super reliable narrator. I mean she's probably a reliable narrator, but she doesn't know. I mean we know of the time where the abyss was stopped thanks to people like Yulva and Ingward and the unnamed third sealer I mean they stopped the abyss in Nulando by flooding um, the city but she said I don't think the abyss can be stopped well it was in Nulando may the flames guide thee so, anyway, that is Elizabeth. We are already 25 minutes into this. I don't know how far we're going to get. So, yeah, this area right here is... Let's just equip the binoculars here. Well, 
Wow, there's three zooms. I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, this is the area where, um, this is Uwasil, right? But this is the darker garden. And uh, what we're seeing here, this was the area that we came in and then we fought our, our, uh, Sif. Uh, so across on this side, if we were to continue this way, we would go up to Alvina and over to the area over there. Um, yeah, th this pathway up here was not here, but this one was. Uh, and then you can, yeah. This is the bridge you cross. And there's a little bit knocked out right here. Oh, did not even see those guys. But these guys look kind of interesting. I can kill them on one hit, which is nice. But they, uh... They look like they're... Trees. Very similar to the things that we were fighting in the dark wood garden. And this is called the royal wood. Again, royal, you know. What royalty is it referring to? But yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see a lot of similarities, but like, uh, you know, I'll just tell you right now, like, this is the exact layout. And we can see here that we have these you know these things oh, I love that they fall down and remember the stone giants you know we have these things which are very similar And these things, which are uh, similar to the things that gave us mosses. But they look like farmers. They have plows. They have watering cans. And look around here, you can see that it was a lot sparser. But you can see all the like, like lightning bugs or whatever I was talking about. Just unmass here wow don't want to go there so we see this area here which Almost looks like a gladiator arena or something. Gladiator arena. Um, and this little, oops, this little offshoot here. We will go to these places. But it's interesting. This arena here looks like it has a sludge all over it at the top. These are cool. So, um, these are made of wood. And there's like the, when you do the cast light sorcery, there's a little ball of light. And that's what's put in here. Very nice. So, this is the place where you would go to Alvina. You'd, you'd walk in and you'd go up the stairs or whatever. And behind it was the stone. There was a chest right here. So there was like a path connecting these two, and this is where Alvina sat, right in that 
window right there. And this is the area across there where all of the hunters uh, fought you. That looks like I should be able to drop. Like, just, you know, in terms of what I've been able to drop in. Like, I could drop that. I, I, I think it kills you automatically. Like, I would be surprised if you could create that shortcut by just doing that. But, uh, that's funny. So we get the Guardian Gauntlets. Gauntlets of the Stone Knights, Guardians of the Forest Sanctuary. The Stone Knights are golems animated by magic, and their enchanted gauntlets are impressively heavy. So just the way the stone giants were, the guardians are also um, golems. That's very weird AI. Huh. Ooh, he dropped an item. Greedy. We did see that uh, parapet out there, or that buttress, or that castle wall. I think that's San Orlando. You know, proof that. Or not proof, but, you know, just. This is. After Anorlando was built, which means that it's probably during the Age of Fire. Yeah, so what did this guy drop? Oh, so he does drop the Blood Red Moss Clump. Of course, I died to check the other one. Um, yeah, I should probably take this off. Um... my stuff. case I think you know once they did the DLC they learned a little bit of how people play so one thing that they definitely do here is they make these guys swivel a lot more because people go around the back and of course they do that in Dark Souls 2 and 3 as well So yeah, if if he he snicks his thing in the ground, if you stay around too long, he like pulls it up. Like if you are in front of him, I guess, and he uh, pulls it up and it launches you, kind of. Um. Yeah. Let's go this way. I'm 
I'm not sure what to do with these episodes because, I mean... You know, I'm already almost done and I really haven't done anything yet here, so... Um, there's an ambush here. I can't get up there. Dropping some items. Hopefully it's the item I want. Nope. Not a one. Alright. But yeah, they still drop the same. <laughs> Blood red and purple and all that stuff, so. I guess that was... Wow. And these guys drop twinkling. Oh, can you not go up there? Huh, I thought you could. Guardian leggings. Yeah, nothing new. Um, so yeah, if we had gone here, I believe this is the area where the cats are sitting up here. Meaning, I know where that goes. Let's go there in a little bit. Let's, exper let's uh, explore the rest of the uh, area. I guess we'll just <laughs> explore this initial... Oh wow, there's so many people here. Come on. Jeez. Wow. Three times. I only stood there and tanked it because... Okay. Come on, Twinklin. We don't really need Twinklin, but... What we do need is what these uh, forest guys drop. Oh, don't kick them out of the way. Ooh. Follow up. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys. <laughs> But yeah, it's interesting, he only does it, like, when you're in front of him. Nope. Not yet. Alright, let's see what else is over here. So we can see onto that other area a little bit. Back to that weird, like what do they call that in Rome? God, I can't remember anything any, any, uh, <laughs> anymore these days. Where the gladiators fought, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then we're back here. Alright. 
So we've cleared this forest. Very slowly. There's plenty more to come. And I guess we'll, uh, we'll probably end the episode here before we head off to the next section. And uh, we can finish the rest of the Royal Wood and open all the shortcuts next time. Thanks for watching.